Hello, Internet. This is Whispering Whim, bringing you yet another grocery haul today. I spent like $230 today, which uh, shocked me because I only went to one store. Uh, but as you'll see, I did buy a few like extras uh, on this particular trip. But first up is a rather normal expense, right? Some good old bread. I have successfully switched to wheat bread. I was very resistant in the beginning, especially because like, you know, one of the big selling points of wheat bread is it has more fiber. That's why you should get it. But when you look at most of them, they have like a gram more. So I wasn't entirely convinced that I should do it. But then I realized, you know, when you multiply that by like three or four sandwiches in a week, uh, you know what? That fiber does add up, so. Um, and, you know, I'm I'm starting to get used to the, I don't know, the, the deeper flavor that is wheat bread. Uh, I do like me some refined carbohydrates, though. <laughs> Speaking of refined carbohydrates, got some Cheez-Its. These are the extra toasty ones. I really enjoy these, like, far more than I should be allowed to. Next up. We have a whole bunch of sundry items, uh, mainly because I did not want to go to Walmart today. I think that's true most days. <laughs> um, and first up, though, we have some Sensodyne toothpaste. Uh, this is the go-to brand, although I've had to be careful lately. Um, it used to be that anytime I picked up Sensodyne, it would have stannous fluoride as the active ingredient and that is the better of the two commercially available fluorides there's stannous fluoride i can't think off the top of my head the name of the other fluoride and they'll both do anti-cavity but stannous is the one that'll kind of really boost your um, non-sensitivity take away sensitivity that's probably a better way to put it. <laughs> but yeah, I've noticed on the new and improved uh, versions, they're starting to go for that other fluoride. And that makes me sad because I know, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a dentist, but from as far as I can tell, research wise, stannous fluoride is the way to go. Speaking of teeth things, I've got some, um, they're basically toothpicks that are pipe cleaners. <laughs> uh, they call them, what do they call them? Pro-waxa brush, go-between cleaners. Um, and I've had to start using these when I got the braces because not only is it hard to floss, but then like I could floss and brush and they'll still be like a piece of rice like um, on underneath one of the brackets and these will let you get those out. Following that, we have some headache relief. We managed to run out of all of our painkillers this um, this week. I guess it was an ouchy week for us. And this one's basically a generic for Excedrin. So it has um, aspirin um, and cetaphetamine. I think I said that right. And then caffeine as well. Um, but you know what's interesting is I don't think... That one works quite as well for most of my ailments as... Oh no, where'd it go? Maybe it managed to get into a different bag. Um, I also got some ibuprofen, hopefully, <laughs> hiding out in another bag. Um, and I get both because oddly ibuprofen seems to work better for a lot of my ailments when I have them. I'm not, I'm not in pain all the time, I promise. <laughs> But what's kind of annoying is that when you wear braces, they recommend against using ibuprofen. Um, when you first get your adjustments done, they'll let you take some alongside um, asphetophetamine. <laughs> like when you first put on your braces or you're getting a really rough adjustment, they say that you can kind of use both painkillers at the same time and it'll help. Um, but um, ibuprofen whatever the 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 difference is in the way that it's an anti-inflammatory will actually slow down your body's ability to move your teeth so 
that's an odd little fact for you guys. Next up, we're finally away from... No, we're not. There is one more. One more first aid thing in this bag. Uh, we have some triple antibiotic ointment. Um, Neosporin would be the name brand for that. Um, we try not to use it. And um, yeah, I guess our last little tube of it expired like three years ago. So uh, I got us a new tube. My, um, my guy, he got a bit of a, a scrape on his side. So he needed something and I got something. Next up, we have some chicken noodle soup. Not much to say about that, so we can move on to the last item in this one particular bag. I did buy lots of stuff today. Uh, and that is just some zesty dill pickle spears. Let's see here. We have two of these black bags. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned it before or not, but I tried to do some printing on tote bags. It did not go well. So I now have a lot of like poorly printed bags that I use for groceries. But they actually, like the structure of the bags is fabulous. Um, can't complain there. It was just my skills that was lacking. Anyways, we have some mother's cookies. These are essentially the same thing as the circle, circus animal cookies, uh, but they are pink and mythical instead of, or they're purple and mythical instead of pink and circusy. I'm not quite sure why, but these ones are easier to find now, at least at Winco. I, I suspect part of it is the the branding away from like circus in general. I've noticed some people like just the concept of animals in a circus is kind of taboo now, which to be fair, is, as far as I've heard, they've been um, not treated well in circuses, all the animals. So I guess it's a good thing that um, that's dying out. Anyways, let's not dwell on, on sad things. I've got some tuna fish uh, in the pouches. And you know, it's funny, the pouches are cheaper. And a lot of people think that that means like, it's a less good meat. Like the meat is the same in the tin cans and in the plastic bags. Uh, you're just not paying for all that tin. And on top of that, like, I guess a tin can could be recycled if recycling actually works around you, which is a whole nother topic. But um, I like the fact that the bags don't impart any flavors. You know, the ones that are in the tin can always kind of, you can kind of tell they came from a tin can. There's a particular metallic undernote to it all that I don't quite care for. But um, anyways, I had had two packages of tuna kind of kicking around in my cupboard for goodness it had to have been a few months now and they just sat there and they sat there and then one day I was like tuna melt you know like it was revolutionary but oh my goodness it was like the best tuna melt I think because I haven't had one in a few months and now I'm kind of obsessed and I want to eat more <laughs> next up we have some uh, cranberry almond protein bars uh, to put into my guys' lunches. And we've also got some apple cinnamon like squeezy bottle things. I actually got these for me, which is an odd choice because plastic is wasteful and uh, I don't make myself the same kind of lunches I make him. But I have shows coming up. Good, good shows where I'm going to sell my art and stuff. Um, so it's good to have a few like to-go snacks for me too. Next up, we have a bag of seasoning from the bin section at Winco. You never know what you're going to get at the bin section, but I had run out of Italian seasoning. I already have like, did I save it? I know I saved it, but where? Um, I already have a bunch of those big containers that can hold seasoning and they can be reused so I got to the point where I was like why am I getting more and more plastic bottles when it's you know maybe a little annoying but definitely a lot cheaper to buy it this way next up we have some extra hot horseradish sauce uh, I should have put this away 
um, and I forgot to take it back out of my cart. My, I was hankering, I was craving uh, some corned beef and cabbage. Um, and then I looked at the prices of corned beef at my local grocery store. Uh, and not not even my local grocery store. I went to Winco, which is the one that's a little bit of a drive for me, but it's generally cheaper. And they wanted five dollars a pound for corned beef. Like I could get a steak for cheaper. I just couldn't. It's weird, you know, because corned beef is corned beef, you know, partly because it's a rougher cut of meat and you have to marinate it forever to like break that down. I guess that just doesn't matter anymore. Um, you know, it's odd how all the like yucky cuts of meat are slowly getting more and more expensive. It's not yucky. I love corned beef, but I think you know what I mean. Like the, the, the labor intensive cuts of meat. That's a better way to put it. Anyways, next up, uh, we have some little peanut butter balls. Truth be told, I just wanted the like individual peanut butters that are in like a, a pouch. I like taking those to shows because they don't need to be refrigerated and you can kind of like just eat a little glob of peanut butter at a time in between customers. <laughs> but Winco did not have any of those, so I got these instead. They're a little more processed than I prefer. There's definitely some uh, less than desirable things in there like hydrogenated vegetable oil, but I really didn't feel like going to like five different stores today. I just, I didn't want to. So, I didn't. <laughs> uh, but anyways, this is a good show snack. The show I have coming up this weekend, very like anxious for. It'll be the first big one of the year. I had a little baby show. Um, I guess the beginning of April was when I had the little show. And it was a disappointment. Um, but this one, historically, has always been good for me before COVID. And then it died during COVID. So I'm like, okay, show. Make me lots of money. <laughs> Next up, we have a bag of, I can't remember if this one's 12 bean or 15 bean, uh, but it's a lot of beans, a lot of legumes, um, peas, and white beans, red beans, etc. cetera. Um, and I love to make 15 bean soup. Uh, which is kind of, I don't know, I guess it's kind of somewhere between a minestrone and like a chili, kind of. I don't know if that's an accurate description of it. Maybe more like, I mean, if you've had navy bean, that's pretty much 15 bean. But it's a tasty soup. It's super good. And our spring has been surprisingly cold so far. Uh, which, you know, is okay. I'm just hoping we don't go from like freezing to super hot, which is something it likes to do around here. Next up, we have two of those seasoning packets. I can't get away from them. They're like a buck and a quarter a piece. And I know I have spices and I should be able to mix stuff, but they're just different. I don't know. They have something in them that I can't quite replicate. Um, one of the things I've been meaning to get is some, um, and forgive me if this offends anybody, but I want to get some MS and MSG, um, monosodium glutamate. Uh, I guess, you know, it had a really bad rap because there's a lot of it in Chinese food and, you know, one guy one time said that he got sick from eating a lot of Chinese food, uh, but it's so, it's been debunked. And it's, you know, a legitimate flavor enhancer. And I'm sure I've eaten it in things, but I've never cooked with it before. I've been kind of curious. Uh, but turns out there's like n nowhere so far that I've looked any brand of the stuff. Like I've been to Walmart. I've been to Winco. Did I? I don't think I looked today. That might be a difference. But like the little grocery store near me, I've been, I've been to a few places and I cannot find this stuff. And I know it has a bad rap, but I also know it's been cleared of that. It's interesting. Anyways, next up, we have croutons from the bin section. We have some shake and bake ranch and herb flavor. We've got some artichoke hearts. I've been eating lots of salads and 
I don't know, it sounded like a good salad add-on to me. And then one of the extraneous things that I really didn't need to buy today, but I bought. This is a set of coasters, a rather expensive set of coasters. It was $10 for four of them, which I think is expensive, but um, Mother's Day is coming up and my mom loves butterflies and I never know what to get her. And I don't know, something just told me to buy this, this set of coasters because I never know what to get her ever. <laughs> uh, it's, it can be a little traumatizing. Following that, we have we have some artichoke hearts that don't want to let go of the bag. Uh, we have some potatoes, potatoes, um, and I got the one that has multiple different colors in the pack, just you know, so I can pretend I'm eating different vitamins, <laughs> vitamins for those. Uh, in certain parts of the world. And um, yeah. <laughs> we have one more dry bag to go through. Um, and then also we've got a couple of big bulky things off in the corner as I usually do. Uh, we have some apples. I decided to get the pink lady type uh, this time around. My guy prefers Granny Smith, but he also likes variety occasionally, so. We'll try that out. And then for me, I got a watermelon. Uh, he cannot stand watermelon or any melon, which makes me sad because then I have to eat it all myself. But that one's pretty small. I'll probably do it. <laughs> and then I also have a jug of distilled water. I have a lucky bamboo plant. Uh, and I've had that plant for goodness, like six years now. And it is very sensitive to the chlorine in the water. Um, and I was using filtered water. We have like one of those Brita pitchers. But whatever happened during the last water change, uh, some of the leaves are yellowing. And that's usually a sign of too much chlorine. You know, when you take out all the other variables, because I've had this plant for so long. But anyways, Usually that's a sign of chlorine, and I've, I've seen it before with that plant. I think the, the, the filter is starting to not sit completely in the pitcher quite right. I think it's getting old enough that the pitcher has warped or something. And they manufactured those so that they're not a perfect circle. It's an intentional thing, so it's harder to like put a generic filter into your pitcher. It's kind of annoying. Anyways, I figured I'd just cut that off at the head and uh, change out the water again with some distilled water. Now here's the ibuprofen I was talking about earlier. Those are for the days where I'm particularly hurty. I'm, I'm just going to sacrifice the, the teeth moving for one day if I'm not feeling well. And then we've got some lemon juice and some lime juice. These are great in my opinion to throw in my soda stream water instead of buying the you know natural flavors that's like a little bottle this big and then we have some sesame crackers one little bit of ginger also for getting our our water tasting good while not being all sugary and stuff some more avocados uh, the last bag I bought, I think I got to eat most of it. I did eat most of it, yeah. Which is an accomplishment when it comes to avocados. Got some garbanzo beans. Some kidney beans. Some tomatoes. Some beef broth. I'm planning on making meatball soup since the weather is still kind of holding steady on the on the the chilly side. So more soup, yay! <laughs> I have some large black olives, some dill relish. This will go in my tuna melts, my tuna sandwiches. And then finally, we have a big old bag of onions. And that's it for our dry stuff. On to our fridge stuff. We have a couple of berries. We've got 
raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries. And all the colors uh, of berry so that I get all different kinds of nutrients, right? And then we have Parmesan cheese, which I absolutely adore uh, in my salads. When I make a like Caesar leaning salad, I have a couple now that I make, you know, to keep everything um, interesting because I've been eating a lot of salads. Uh, but this is not a salad. This is a red bell pepper and I will roast that in the oven. It's my favorite thing. Um, and then I will chop it up and put it in hummus. And then we have a family size um, squeezy bottle of jalapeno ranch. This is the good stuff from the refrigerated section. We've got some sour cream and some cream cheese. This is a very dairy heavy bag here. Because we also have some Colby Jack. And here's my Caesar dressing for when I do a Caesar salad. I think that's the one that I'm going to throw the artichoke hearts into. Following that, we have some broccoli, jalapenos, some carrots, and then finally, a cabbage. Uh, annoying little side note, I was going over my receipt because I was surprised on how much I spent. And the lady charged me twice for cabbage. Now, cabbage is a relatively cheap vegetable. They're only like a dollar a piece. But I was still a little bitter because it wasn't until I got home that I saw that. And I was like, darn it, I'm not driving all the way back to save a dollar. But <laughs> that's one dollar less that I could have spent on something else. Like uh, some smoked ham shanks. This is one of the few, like, I don't know, inferior cuts of meat that is still priced as if it's um, less popular. And I think that's because it genuinely is. <laughs> uh, but this stuff is amazing for soups. Um, this particular one, I still have to cook it. Um, they're smoked, but they're not pre-cooked, I guess, which is odd. Uh, but it doesn't bother me. I cook them. And then you have a ham bone. Right? Take the meat off. Now you have a ham bone. And it's great in split pea or navy bean or 15 bean. Like so many soups are enhanced by that like smoky bone broth kind of a situation. And on the pork train, we have some bacon ends and pieces. I have sacrificed convenience for saving money again this month. I think I instinctively knew. Is that going to stay? Yes. Stay. <laughs> I think I instinctively knew that I was buying too much today. Not that I was buying too much, but I bought things there that you don't don't really need to buy at a grocery store. Like toothpaste is, I don't know, 60 cents more expensive when you buy it at the grocery store versus going to Walmart or sometimes Walgreens is cheaper. It hasn't been lately, uh, but you know. I haven't been shopping around. I didn't shop around for this this particular batch o stuff. So I got the annoying ends. Moving on though, I got myself some tasty, tasty yogurt. This is Nusa. And I think it was originally an Australian brand, if I remember right. They used to advertise on the on the lid. And they don't anymore because they switched to um making it in the U.S., or at least the ones that I eat are made in the U.S. Yeah, Aussie culture. Colorado, Colorado fresh. Um, so I don't know if that's accurate to Australian yogurt, but it is one of the best yogurts on the market, in my opinion. And then we have... Oh, my. Some kombucha. This is non-alcoholic. It's just probiotics in a in a can. <laughs> essentially um, and I got two flavors this one is the super berry flavor so it's got raspberry blueberry goji berry and oolong tea and then I have this one 
Uh, same brand, different flavor called Clear Mind. It's rosemary, mint, sage, and green tea. So, see if I can't save myself a few cents by switching to the canned ones. Although the glass bottle variety has a lot more um, option when it comes to flavors. <laughs> and then, finishing out our cooler bags is some good old cheese sticks, but they are not the normal, you know, uh, semi mozzarella cheese sticks. These ones are pepper jack flavor. I figured that would, um, you know, keep things a little interesting for my guy. He's been getting a lot of the same stuff lately, but you know, without spending a million dollars, there's only so much variety I think I can give him. <laughs> but I try, I try my best. Our final bag is our freezer bag here. We've got the ever classic um, stir fry vegetables. This one is the San Francisco blend, and it is green beans, broccolis, broccolis, <laughs> just broccoli, uh, onions, mushrooms, and red peppers. And then we have the pepper stir fry one, which is just onions, green peppers, red peppers, and yellow peppers. Following that, we have some microwave chimichangas. These are for my guy. Now that show season is upon me, uh, I will not be able to cook him dinner every night. <laughs> Poor baby, he is a little spoiled uh, and he doesn't quite know what to do with himself. Uh, usually he'll eat fast food, but um, in case he doesn't feel like going out to Popeyes or whatever, uh, there's some uh, microwave burritos uh, to hold him over, I suppose. And then last but not least, we just have some good old chicken. Because, you know, chicken's good for a lot of things. And you know, the end of the video means shout out time. Um, and I'm going to shout out to Hot Sauce 188 specifically. Uh, I was opening up and kind of going through to see, um, you know, who, who to shout out to. And we have a lot of my regulars. You know, Max, who is Apple Tree, and uh, Ricky McCordy, um, and Hot Sauce is also one of my regulars. Um, Wicca Banks, Veronica Strom. Um, I'm losing track of myself. Uh, I'm just kind of feeling the love because, same, you know, I guess to some, having the same people comment might be like a bad sign, but I think it's just a, um, I don't know, the fact that they keep coming back month after month is good, right? Uh, but there was this lovely comment, and I saw it, and then my brain just didn't answer back right away. Um, my brain. I didn't answer back right away. I think I was looking at it at the doctor's office. Um, but it's such a sweet comment. They say, you're a bright light in an otherwise annoying Monday so far. Thank you so much for all your videos. You're the best. Um, so since I'm like two weeks late, you know, responding to this. Uh, thank you, Hot Sauce 188. You are a bright light in my day too. So there. <laughs> so thank you to everybody who listens and especially those who comment and keep me going. Um, and I hope you know that if I can't say something right away, I still read all the comments and I appreciate them. And yeah, have a wonderful night, you guys. I'll talk to you again real soon.